Patanjali was a great scientist. And as scientist and engineer, these are steps. So Patanjali created eight steps. And he said that if you follow these eight steps, you can achieve anything that you want in this life. If you follow and if you become perfect at these eight steps, When we utter the word yoga, today is International Yoga Day, a very beautiful day. We've taken yoga to the international level, brilliant. But you and me, on a practical level, when we look at yoga, when we talk about yoga, what do we see? What is our understanding of yoga? For most of the people, the first thing which comes to mind is asanas, the postures. If you do a Google research, just type a word yoga on Google and go to the images, the first few hundred images that Google will throw up will all be of different postures and asanas. Yeah. For all of us, yoga, the when I close my eyes and think yoga, it's a certain posture that I see. Yeah. But is that yoga? Is postures the only thing about yoga? Is asana the only thing about yoga? What does yoga really mean and how does it relate to you and me in our practical day-to-day -day life? We'll come to that. <clears throat> in essence, yoga, the literal meaning of yoga means to join, to join the opposites. What does this mean then further? To join means what? To join, see we have two aspects within us. We have an aspect of knowledge and we have an aspect of ignorance in us, right? In between you know, between these black and white shades of grey, of course. <laughs> but largely, our life is about, there are certain things that we know, there are certain things that we do not know, we are ignorant about. The two extremes of our, our knowing, our minds, our knowledge. Yoga is about joining the knowing with the ignorance. Yoga is about joining the darkness with the light. Yeah, Ignorance is like darkness, knowing is light. Yoga is about joining both of them. What happens when you join darkness with light? <laughs> what happens when you join darkness with light? Simple. When you join darkness with light, darkness is no more. There is only light. So yoga is about that. Yoga is about joining. When we use the word light in this context, what does light mean here? Light means knowledge. Light means illumination of the mind. Yeah. That's in, at the at the very basic level. That's what. Uh, is the definition of yoga. Now, now this is just a background I wanted to set so that we are on the same page to take it further. Now, what is its relevance in our day-to-day -day life? Now we are coming into the practical aspect. What is the relevance of yoga in our day-to-day -day life? Okay, All of us, no matter at what stage of our life we are, your students, your teachers, your professors, your pursuing your PhDs or whatever, all of us have certain things that we want to achieve in life. All of us. All of us wants to accomplish certain things in life. All of us wants to acquire certain things in life. All of us wants to experience certain things in life. We all have certain aspirations. Yeah? There's hardly any person on this earth, you won't find anybody on this earth who does not have any aspirations. There could be any aspiration. We're not talking about what aspirations one would have but everybody across the board has aspirations yeah are we together okay we all want to experience life in its fullness if i ask anybody uh, do you want to travel almost everybody wants to travel why do we want to travel because we want to experience life huh? we want to go to one place to another place because we want to experience life we want to achieve something because we want to experience life we want to be very high up in the corporate ladder because we want to experience that life. We want to have a lot of material possessions because then I can buy a BMW or a Ferrari. Why? Because then I want to experience that. Yeah. All of us want to experience life to its fullest. Correct? But if it just becomes a wishful thinking, uh, let's say you as a student, you have a wishful thinking that very soon you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be vice president marketing of a 
of a certain company you have a wishful thinking will it happen only by having this wishful thinking that this is my aspiration to become a vice president will it happen i'm asking no only by wishful thinking doesn't happen let me give you an example let's say you are you you be sitting in sirmore campus let's say from sirmore campus we need to go to let's say new york we need to apply for the so just by a wishful thinking it would happen there's a whole background work that needs to happen we need to apply for a visa we need to show the reason purpose of travel uh, we need to convince the authorities we need to have known people in new york we need to have a purpose of travel and so on and so forth this is a certain process that we need to follow to be able to reach new york from sirmore correct point to be noted here only by wishful thinking nothing happens in life it needs a certain preparation right perfect now let's open this further let's open this further many thousand years ago my friends a great sage happened in india india has been a land of sages a great sage happened in india his name was patanjali he brought the entire knowledge of yoga into human realm most of the people thought yoga is just about asanas but absolutely not yoga is about Patanjali was a great scientist and as scientist and engineer these are steps so Patanjali created eight steps and he said that if you follow these eight steps you can achieve anything that you want in this life if you follow and if you become perfect at these eight steps you can achieve anything whatever is your aspiration it will just not be a wishful thinking you will actually be able to acquire that you'll be actually be able to experience that and he said it with such a force that this is a proof and people who followed his advice or his path or his his process like you know for everything we have a process similarly patanjali created the process for experiencing life hear me out again he created a very structured process through which your experience of life of anything can be ex extremely full your ambitions you can achieve your aspirations you can achieve if you want to create impact in the society you can achieve anything is possible provided you follow these steps yeah this is why i feel this is extremely relevant for all of us yeah this is just not a scriptural text it's a science we are talking about let me share few bits of that science with you today okay let's look at a quick quick thing let's say you have a wishful thinking that you want to start to wake up 5 pm 5 am every day in the morning and you start to go to gym to work on your body to build your muscles or you want to go for a cycling 5 am in the morning or you want to start to write something and you don't have time during the day so you need to get up early in the morning it's a wishful thinking now with this wishful thinking will it happen i'm asking just by the wishful thinking it won't happen what needs to happen if i need to start to get up 5 am in the morning and i'm just using this as an example it could be anything what needs to happen what needs to happen is that my mind needs to listen to me okay it's an interesting question let me ask you this question if you're open enough to to share the answer of that do you think your minds are in your control do you think your minds listen to you hello do you think do you think what you want to do and you just tell your mind hello this needs to be done and mind says yes sir i'm available yes ma'am i'm available let me do that no yeah somebody says no hmm? huh? don't shy in writing no huh? because i know it's no <laughs> and why i know it's no because as i said you know i've also been a student yeah um uh, and it's just not about student it's almost about everybody every human being on earth there are very few people who can claim that their minds are in control for most of the humanity the, the minds are not in control right now if your mind is not in control 
will you be able to pour your attention and energy into something that you want to achieve i'm asking like this assignment you want to accomplish this assignment will you be able to pour absolute attention into this subject right now let me give you let's let's take the example of right now of this dialogue some of you might be thinking what are we talking about some of you might be thinking well yoga is a boring subject i'm too lazy you know i don't want to do yoga because yoga is just asanas in your perception some of you might be thinking mm, you know i have better things to do etc so your mind must be thinking lot of things right now am i right can you say that you're totally here in this moment listening to this conversation which i'm claiming that has the possibility of changing your perception has the possibility of changing your perception but are you totally 200% here in this moment or are you occupied with other thoughts other things or maybe on your you know insta or whatever yeah are you here <laughs> oh <laughs> director ma'am says yes i'm very glad to hear that yes <laughs> yes another friend says privately yes great great now this is the capacity of the mind you know why we do not learn things why we have to read things again and again to be able to grasp them do you know why that happens because when the knowledge is being conveyed we are not there we physically there but our minds are somewhere else at that time we thinking something else or we are we are thinking probably is the speaker saying the right thing or the wrong thing mind is thinking all of that and mind is also thinking that oh you need to catch up with your friend and you need to call your girlfriend and boyfriend and so on and so forth mind is all engaged in so many other things because it is not totally here we miss we we miss what is being conveyed and i'm just not talking about this session i'm talking about life in general that is the only reason hundred students passed from a college or a, or or a certain class or a certain institution certain course and out of the hundred only very few become top leaders of tomorrow rest becomes followers because the leaders only have the capacity to be there to focus their mind into something to be able to hold their thoughts together in that particular moment uh namaskar shri anish ji namaste and uh, uh, thank you uh, dr rinki uh, thank you uh, uh, dr anshu and uh, thank you my dear uh, student uh who is also one of the panelists today so i uh, actually i am uh, i'm speechless having uh, heard uh, so profound uh, dialogue uh, which uh, maybe um, shall i uh, confess that it's for the first time that uh, i also you know try to uh, come in and understand it uh, thoroughly um, let me uh, just uh, uh, say that the way uh, shri anish uh, has explained the whole uh, process uh, as a part of you know uh, uh, personal understanding that that might one uh, look at and try to imbibe in the day to day life i'm sure anybody who looks at it as an input uh, for current and the fu uh, future situations uh, many of the uh, you know mental stress and the emotional stress i would say as well uh, that can be taken care of i'm very happy today as a director as i always feel whenever there is an opportunity for people like shri anish to talk to my students my staff my faculty and i also get an opportunity to listen to people like you who i shall i say are not just accomplished in terms of what they did in the corporate and um, but also you know who have achieved some kind of uh, uh, who have touched in fact some kind of pinnacle uh, in in samadhi i would say now or in the personal experience uh, experiences and it's actually very uh, honest kind of a confession again that i would like to make that it's not easy to get uh, uh, people like shri anish to come and talk to people Uh, it he seems to be humbly uh, exceeding to our request but there is a common friend i have to thank uh, who who sort of connected us 
and i'm very thankful to that uh, common friend gp thank you gp i must thank you on this uh, occasion if you are connected i don't see you as a panelist but then surely uh, connecting us to shri anish uh, shri anish belongs to himachal i would say our very own state in which indian institute of management sirmore resides and by virtue of the fact that he is in dharmashala so very shortly i promise that we are going to host you sir uh, here the moment the pandemic uh, actually uh, is over and you are in a position to come and travel to us and uh, i'm sure whosoever uh, has listened to you today including me is uh, kind of uh, uh, emancipated i would say or has earned as a kind of a reward of these uh, one and a half hours of stay with uh, you it's a it's an it's of immense importance i would say because couple of things that you talked about uh, they are extremely relevant in the day to day life especially when we are talking to management students management faculty whom uh, we always teach to be leaders we try to groom them as uh, leaders we always want them to be contributing as leaders but at the end of the day hardly we try to define that what is the process which make, makes them uh, uh, a leader so i think you have you have done that uh, service today in terms of not even training my students who are joining today but also my faculty who are teaching them in class that while we aspire this country to have management leaders in the form of the budding mba students in uh, national institutes like iims it is equally important and on this day when we are celebrating celebrating international yoga day it's all the more important and relevant that institutes like us must propagate this knowledge mm -hmm.